would you say I have a reasonable understanding of how to execute these various sex acts properly? Yes. How awesome is that? What you're doing is disgusting. Listen, lady. Well, well, well. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm Sterling Cooper. This handsome gentleman next to me is Mr. Aaron Clary, otherwise known as Cappy, otherwise known as the grumpiest man on the internet. Well, where, wait, where, wait, now, Ro Rolo said that. Where did I get this reputation about being grumpy? <laughs> well, yeah, you're definitely the one who gets stood up the most by Rolo. I'm the only one to get stood up. He'll go whore about with anybody. He'll he'll <laughs> slum it with anyone, apparently, but me. <laughs> oh, he, uh, yeah, he, look, he spent like a week in Miami with Myron. That whore, that and, cheating whore. Do, yeah. Do you know we were no more than half a mile away from each other? And I'm like, text him. I'm like, hey, Rolo, I'm in Vegas. Where are you at? Then he then he goes home. He says, oh, yeah, I was over down by Henderson. I'm like, you do eat. I was like literally half a mile from you. I could probably even guess what restaurant you were at. And you're like, oh, it's too late now. I'm back at home. I, uh huh. So. Look, look I don't know why anyone would, would turn down spending an afternoon with you, Kathy. I, I I don't know either. I think he just does it to to agitate me. I, uh, well, I look, I've been wanting to, ha to have a one on one chat with you for a while. For a while, we've 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 you know we've been flirting with each other uh, in DMs, right. and now we're finally here. Right. Well, we're That's also good. busy. You were globe trotting around the world. I had to do taxes, much to rhinestone chagrin, because I got him in so early. And um, <laughs> I'm moving too and building out. Yeah. No. A lot of everyone thinks we just show up, wake up, like hey, maybe it is. Like no, there's there's a lot of. Well, like, the steam stuff going look, that that could be because you do lots of these live streams in your pajamas, Gabby. Yeah, well, it, that's efficiency. Okay, see, I don't have no commute. I don't have prep time. It's just that. But then the it, taxes alone just takes two weeks to do, and then the, uh, switching W nine forms and all this other stuff. But you know this, you know this. Well, yeah, I I pay somebody else to do all that for me. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing that myself, but yeah. I, I got kind of a system down. It's very efficient for me. Because this, this is, for people who don't really know, this is your, like, your kind of, like, your background is in the financial sector. Correct. Yeah. I was in banking for 15 years. Which is why you know uh, uh, numbers so well. Right. Yeah. No, I, I and, and investing and economics and, and cost benefit analysis and everything. Yes. Yeah. And I was, uh, I actually, <clears throat> I can't remember who introduced me to your book. It might have been. The moment my my best friend actually introduced me to your book, um, the the not the one you've just released, but the uh, the previous one, one of your previous books was uh, the Curse of the High IQ. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, neat. massive, massive fan of that book, and I must say, like that, that really, uh, like I resonated so much with that book, and I was like, son of a bitch, this is why, <laughs> like all the problems you lay out in that book, I have experienced, right. mm -hmm. and I was like, damn. Like maybe I am high IQ, <laughs> or I'm just a de degenerate. It's one of these two things. Yeah. Uh, but there's there was a, a hell of a lot of crossover, and I think a lot of people who, particularly a lot of guys who end up watching channels like mine, channels like yours, channels like Rollos or Riches or Johns or Myrons, they tend to be guys who are pretty high IQ because they're problem solvers. Yeah. They're looking for a solution to things. Yes, they they take agency. They're very cerebral, and and then they also they'll seek out a solution. So yeah, it, it's not surprising they end up at our doorstep. You know? right. So if any of you out there haven't read, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be talking about his his most recent book. But if you haven't read his other books, I highly recommend them. I've also got Bachelor of Pet Economics on my Kindle. I haven't read it yet, uh, but but I. I can one hundred percent recommend the, the Curse of the High IQ. It's ex if you're a if you're a if you're an intellectual guy and you are angry, <laughs> angry, frustrated. Yeah. If you if you maybe have uh, troubles like forming strong relationships with the, with other guys, like really close bonds, like this will shine some light on that. It's and it's very very helpful. Yeah. No, I've gotten that's that's been one of the more. The hot, better compliments I've gotten is like, dude, you just took the wool off my eyes because it's the same thing that happened to me. I was, you're, you're basically floundering around like, why am I, why is there, is there something wrong? Because it's natural to think there's something wrong with you. And then you take a couple of tests and then you see the bell distribution curve. You see yourself way over here like, oh, that might have something to do with it. And then 
it's like, here's the keys, kid. And you unlock it like, oh, it all makes sense. It doesn't solve anything, but it makes sense. That's you know, sometimes that's, that's kind of all you need. It's like, it's not, it's not your fault, right? It's not like you're doing Rich, something wrong. You're coming in and out, Rich. You're, you're, uh, you're roboting. Oh, my robot? Unless it's me. A little pixelated. Do you want me to turn off my cam, get more bandwidth? No, let me, let me just, uh, I think we'll, you tell, I'm going to drop it in the chat here real quick. Okay. In the chat, let me know uh, if mine is coming in all right or if it's uh, Aaron's that is coming in yeah. a little bit choppy. But I have nothing else going on right now. Make sure. This is good. Ah, this might, this might have something to do with it. There we go. Now we're fired up again. Okay. Anyway, but your, your newest book is The Book of Numbers. Right. And uh, this your presentation, the Rule Zero, like last year, was kind of the the birth of this book, correct? Yes, it was. Um, that that was a uh, you know they had to come up with uh, we we're charging a thousand dollars a head, so I wanted to put together a book that would get people their money back, <clears throat> and I had to kind of sit down and think and analyze like, okay, where do men? Usually, it's always about making money, but if you really want to make money, you're usually uh, pissing away money somewhere else. And so it's much easier to find out where you're misallocating your money or wasting it than it is to go get a raise at the office or go start up a new company and stuff like that. And so to make it applicable to everybody, I said, okay, what do men spend most of their time, research, money, resources, uh, concerns, psychological resources, where do they spend most of that? And by far it's women. We can talk about houses. We could talk about college educations. We could talk about cars well and these are all certainly incredibly expensive and costly items but by far the by leaps and bounds you, you don't even like astronomical units the number one thing that men spend most of their time money resources and energies on is the pursuit of women and i i asked was is it worth it you know no one's asked it guys just think girls vagine and then they go and and i understand because they're genetically biologically hardwired to do so but what I want to do is do a math using my skills as an economist and financial analyst, do a cost benefit analysis and say, okay, here's what it's going to cost you. And here's your statistical chances of what kind of success you're going to have with these girls. And somewhere in there is not only, well, definitely in there is like a, where you're like, your eyes are open. You're like, whoa, it's that bad. It's like, yes, it is. But there's other things, especially when you break it down by the sub statistics that I use to compile this analysis where these sub statistics tell you what specific actions you can do to increase your chances. And so it, just even following one, like for example, uh, Sterling, uh, you have a high IQ. Could you even tolerate nightclubs? Or are you okay with nightclubs? I, I used to go to, to nightclubs and things and enjoy them. How, by the way, guys, how's my audio now? Is this better? Audio's fine. Yeah. It was the okay. video that, yeah, everything's coming. Yeah. Out. It was my, my, my roadcaster has been giving me the shits uh, mm -hmm. lately. Uh, so instead, I will instead of this several thousand dollar roadcaster, I will use these like ten dollar fucking headphones. <laughs> God, I love technology. Uh, yeah, I used to go to like I used to go to nightclubs quite frequently in my in my twenties, like when I was sort of learning to to be good with girls and stuff, and learning how to talk to women. And it was uh, I have to admit there was a lot of guys who were a lot dumber than me who had a lot more fun than mm -hmm. me there doing doing that whole thing. For me, it was always kind of it always kind of felt more like work, right? Because I like I, I, if I want to get good with chicks, if I want to learn how to talk to chicks, I have to do this thing. So I'm just going to do it night in, night out. It wasn't I, I, you sort of you sort of eventually fall in love with the process, and I eventually started to enjoy the. I I used to I had to find a way to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It didn't sort of come naturally, right? But like things like like raves and like. Music House festivals. parties are okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, mu music festivals for me. For me, it was always music festivals. I didn't understand. It. I didn't really enjoy music festivals. So I was like, uh, this is just like a bunch of a crowd of people standing around, like jumping up and down to like some dude. I'm like, okay, cool, like whatever. House parties I like because I can sort of because I know the people, right? Right. That, that I didn't mind, but I can. But for me, like the 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 corollary here would be 
music festivals, I guess. Right, right. The, but the the larger point that I was making is that if if you zone in and hone in, now see, you went to the nightclubs, and even though you didn't like it, it was like going to the gym or something. You you persevered and you developed some kind of game, and you could approach girls, and you you wouldn't get nervous, and you got comfortable with it. Uh, and that's that's probably one of the, about the only good things you're going to get out of uh, going to a nightclub. But your time is much better spent going to the gym and asking right. girls out on a regular basis. And so that kind of return on investment to save you time and resources. Uh, cause I remember, Oh, I love going to clubs, but, it, but it's cause I loved late nineties, industrial techno, uh, industrial hardcore rock, uh, right. moshing and all that. Yeah. I'm sure Troy Francis and I could talk about the type of music back in the day. Uh, but man, did I waste a lot of time trying to get girls when oh, I really should have just been going to the gym. All right. And it's these kind of mistakes, you know, basically deprogramming or at least uh, debunking all these lies and misinformation young men are given about how to get girls and all that. That's the value of this book. And that's what I want to do is take a, a mm. actuarial statistical analysis, looking at very sociological data, polling data and things like that and say, all right, here are your bottleneck points. Here are your key points. And if you focus on these things, now you're going to drastically in increase your chances with women. You're going to save a lot a lot of money uh, and, and i am talking if you go into the book and you read through it you're talking a quarter million cash over the course of your life and if you were to invest that in the s p 500 blah 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 you're looking at figures between six and nine million dollars uh, of opportunity costs so we are uh, so this is a very cost beneficial book for people to consume and read and we have even talked about what it saves you in terms of your sanity your stress your time uh, confusion, angst, rage. That's that. I just where that's just the financial aspect. Right. Uh, quick shout out to Loving Lark who loves us both. Thank you very much for the ten dollars oh, super chat, Loving Lark. And that's of course, nice my uh, my my friend Yilmaz, uh, who we had on the show a couple of weeks ago. He says the worst place on earth to get ass are nightclubs. <laughs> I, I agree. Well, I don't. I, I don't know if I agree with that. But I mean, Yilmaz is Yilmaz is is a is a, uh, a Muslim. He's a strict Muslim. So. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it, it all depends. Like there's, there's some, you know, the numbers I've done, it's been a macroeconomic view. It's like nationwide United States. And so generally speaking, your nightclubs, especially now and later. Now that's going to be different on the micro environment. Obviously Myron, uh, you know, over in Miami where the nightclub is hot. And, and so that's a different, smaller environment. And, and he's a different person. You may, you may enjoy it. You know, I enjoyed raves and, and, and moshing and all that. And every once in a while I'd, I'd find an acorn. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, he's right. Nightclubs are, especially by today's standards, are horrible to meet girls at. Well, who was, I think, I can't remember who was saying this. Was it a Rolo? I think it might have been Rolo or, um, or Myron. When Myron and Rolo were talking together recently in Miami, one of them said that, uh, like, nightclubs have been destroyed by, like, America, the American nightclub scene has been destroyed by the whole bottle service thing. Where like yeah. to get any girl's attention, like so basically now you have you have like table service where you have like you know you pay for a table, you get uh, a bottle of like vodka or whatever, and then you have like your cordoned off sort of section, and that's where all the girls hang out now. So like the only way to really kind of get the attention of any of the attractive women in a club nowadays is to have like a table with a bottle service, or at least in like these sort of bigger cities, and it sort of ruined what clubs used to be maybe back in the early two thousands or late nineties. Mm -hmm. where it was a place where everyone would go and you could mingle with everybody. And it was right. like, like you had a fighting chance. Right. Said, <laughs> you you had, right. you did, but yeah, there's been, and now keep in mind, this is over 20 years ago, 2000. Yeah. yeah and, like to me, that is, to me, it, it's like, I, I know I'm getting older cause I'm losing tra track of the time. Like yeah. I'm only, I'm only like 33. And it's like, when someone says like, I, I refer to the 2000s like it was yesterday, but it was 20 goddamn years ago. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, your our, Australia, I remember way back in the day, uh, he was probably your most successful president in Australia. John Howard, was it? Yeah, yeah, John Howard. Okay. Yeah. He was early 2000s, right? That was a long yeah. time. That's just like yesterday. I don't know who Turnbull is or who the other one. I'm just remembering. Wait, I, I, I don't even, I've, I, haven't lived, I haven't lived in Australia in about three and a half years now. And I have, I couldn't have told you who our prime minister was that entire time because it, it, <laughs> Australia a has turnover. This, yeah. Australia has this thing, at least for the last five years, Australia's had this habit of like somebody gets elected and then their party stabs them in the back and they replace them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause our electoral system is a little bit different to uh, right. everyone else's. Well, anyway, since the time John Howard was president and Bill Clinton, you know, that, that's how far back we're going. Uh, there's also been some 
sociological uh, sociological changes, uh, particularly among the millennials. The millennials had no money. Mm. Um, I also would state, and I know this sounds harsh, this is about when young Americans decided to get ugly and fat. Uh, the men were cowards. The women were bitchy. And, yeah. and, and they didn't have the money. And plus, if you remember, they started back in our day was you switch to grunge. We're not doing that pop 80 stuff anymore. We're going to grunge because it's cool. It's low key. We're going to shop at rag stock and goodwill. Same thing kind of happened to clubs like, oh, clubs are pretentious. Let's go to the brew pub. And so now you got the brew pub and that's kind of taking it over. So they've fallen out of fashion. They've fallen out of favor. Um, mm. And now, and Myron, this is why, guys, if you're young, you have to tune into Myron because I'm old. I don't pay attention to this stuff anymore. He is on the front lines and he can tell you these uh, developments and advances where the front line is. Mm. And what I've seen is this rapid arms race where it's just getting skewed and bottle service is, is another perfect example of that. I didn't know it was universal. I thought there was only something in Vegas, but yeah, now if, if you thought a loud, noisy bar where you can't hear each other talk, where you're going to have to pay a cover to get in and women don't, they get in for free. If you thought that was already a hostile environment, now you got to go buy a table and get bottle service. And then the girls will sit and drink with you. And so I was just like, and I know Myron is like, yeah, so you got to play the game like this. I'm like, whoa, yeah. whoa. Well, a night at home with a great bottle of scotch and playing Star Wars sounds a hell of a lot better right now. <laughs> Reading a book, Frank Levin, sounds better. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. Uh, well, I'll shout out. Not, not only does Myron know what he's talking about, but his, but Walter, Fresh Prince CEO, his mm. uh, his business partner, fresh. he Fresh really knows what he's talking about too. I'll, I'll I'll tell that right now. I mean, having hung out with them in Miami, and, and you know, yeah, don't yeah, no one should be discounting uh, Walter's expertise here. Walter slays, and he he does it in a very specific way. He like so. He, wait, wait. Fresh's about, name is Walter. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. I, did, I don't know if I should I forget. I don't know if I should have said that. Forget that. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure they've mentioned it at least once on the podcast. But Fresh Prince CEO was not. It's not his birth name. In case anyone could figure that out. Yeah, figured. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he has. He he talk about a sexual arms race. He knows. He knows what the arms race is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing I, I remember having this conversation recently with a young a young lady, um, a young lady who was not a hoe. A young lady who is a very chaste woman, mm. and she doesn't she doesn't wear lots of makeup or anything like that. And she was we were talking about the you know she was like asking me about porn girls like man like so how much makeup do they wear like are they are they in the makeup chair all the time like are they wearing makeup all day every day I'm like yeah like you see these girls when they when they take their makeup off they're like covered in you know acne and they got bad skin and stuff and I thought mm. I thought for a second I was like it's it's a sexual arms race for these women because you think about it like you re rewind the clock and look back to like. Look at pictures of women from like the 1920s, even like the really doled up girls in the magazines, right? Mm. They're, in a, they're in a bit of makeup. Cool. And then flash forward to like 2020, like 100 years later, like all the women are like, the sexual arms race is like, okay, high, you're going to wear high heels. You've got to have like caked up makeup. Mm. You've got to have big fake titties. You've got to have plumped up lips. You've got to have some Botox in there. You've got to have extensions in your hair. Like you gotta have fake eyelashes. Like all, it's it just the sexual arms race for women is just stack, 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 stack. So that to the point we're all like they're all like a giant Barbie doll now. Or not they're all not a giant Barbie doll, but that's like the, you know, like the hottest girl in the club or whatever. The one that's turning all the heads. Uh, the one that is like Queen B. Yeah, like she is just so fake and artificial now because she's th this sexual arms race for for women is all about amplifying like these sexual signals. Mm -hmm. Everything is about over exaggerating her sexuality. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's ended up to where we're at now, where we have, you know, these sort of Barbie doll looking girls with guys. The sexual arms race is more about like being flashy and displaying like a high value lifestyle. Right. You know, so you haven't seen, you haven't seen the same trend. Like guys haven't gone out and gotten like, like synthol, injections and biceps hasn't become a common thing right right, right? well men and women want different things exactly. i mean women want a guy who's in shape and tall no doubt and obviously put together there's that but the the peacocking if you want to call it that that occurs now is displays of wealth and above all else and this mark my words because now we're in the internet world and I'll, i know this is going to sound harsh most women do not understand finances most women no. could not identify a genuinely rich man it's going to be showcasing and signaling 
status and prestige. Yeah, and that yeah, is yeah. exact. And, and money comes with it, but that's what is really going to pull women like gravity towards a guy. And it's the same. It's it's. I'm glad you said it like that because it's it's yeah showcasing the signals of status and prestige without necessarily having status and prestige. Mm -hmm. The same way that all these sort of sexual uh, um, boosting signals for women is trying to sh to signal like youth and beauty, mm -hmm. even though she might not necessarily be healthy and young. Oh yeah, everyone's posing. Yeah. I mean, people only it, it, the real them is only a fraction of themselves. Now, of course, there's legit sincere guys who do make the money, and they are in. Uh, positions of status or prestige. I'm sure there are investment bankers who are good looking and they're the magic 666. And I'm sure there are some gals that have a natural beauty that if you take them home from the nightclub and they shower and they, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, I'd, I'd bang her too. Scarlett Johansson, by the way, is the perfect example of that. I don't know if you've ever seen Lost in Translation, but she has no makeup and it. Well, I'm sure she has some, but watch that. That's a, an example of natural beauty. Mm. Um, but yeah, but keep in mind, like it's, it's, it's two separate markets. This is dating or or, or fucking essentially. Yeah. Uh, it's not about long term or getting together. Uh, and and maybe for girls, it's like having a little bit of a sugar daddy here on the on the side to to maybe buy her stuff. Uh, but long term, it's just it's the wrong foot to step off on if you're looking for something long term. So yeah. you know, any young man or any man who's recently divorced looking to get back into the dating scene, be very clear what your intentions are and what's going to be required of different environments if you're dating, going for long term, or something like that. The nightclub scene, yeah, you better fake it till you make it, and do not. This is not a girl you're bringing home to mom. <laughs> yeah, well, that's most of them. Happy <laughs> at this stage. I, I'm aware. Okay, all right, but you're never gonna find one you bring home to mom. I, you, you're just it's just that it was that bad in the 90s. It's I can't imagine how bad it is now. And it's like women have been kind of lied to about this that like the way to like lock a guy down is with like sex and sexuality only. Like sex and sexuality for a woman is like the, is the way to get his attention. But it's not the way to like lock the guy, to, especially to lock a high value guy, like a, a guy with actual status and prestige and wealth. The way you lock him down, because a guy like that tends to have options. A guy like that tends to have his his choice of the of the crop. Mm -hmm. The way to lock that guy down isn't with like your sexuality. The way to lock that, the way to lock that guy down is with like loyalty and like. Like being nice, loyalty, <laughs> being pleasant, heaven forbid. Showing uh, up on time, <laughs> not <laughs> nagging, not being a bitch. I no, it's it, it's we can laugh, but it's so tragic because it, I think what you're hitting on there, and this has happened to me. I think it happens to every guy. Is you'll have sex to a girl, and and girls equate having sex to commitment. Well, uh, yeah. what about us? What about us? We just had sex. That means nothing. And I, I'd even get pissed when girls would, but, but I thought like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I ask you to go steady? Did I give you my letterman's jacket from high school? No, we had sex. Buzz. And now, unfortunately, that, especially nowadays, can get you in a lot of trouble where girls, some girls are batty enough. They think, well, the logical thing is to file a false uh, grape accusation. Yeah. Uh, and, and now you're, you're in real hot water, but no, generally speaking, a lot of these young gals or, or old gals too, they'll mistake sex as commitment. And so they'll sleep with the, the very attractive guy. And that's, that's in your right. That's it. Well, here's my currency or my cachet. It's sex. Now you give me commitment and money and resources and status and prestige and a big ring that I can, and they are complete. they're not even trained. I mean, cause if you look at the the parents now they're they're either young boomers and now gen xers or maybe even old millennials uh none of these people have trained their young daughters like okay be nice i mean think set take everything removed away from the co current political zeitgeist or overton's window and how bad this sounds make a guy a sandwich all right now is that now right there that shouldn't be a bad thing but all right, how dare you? I mean, it's yeah. like it's like I, I took some little old woman's dog and kicked it like a football. How dare you? What, to, to say that if you want to make a guy happy to make him a sandwich or to be a good cook? How about stay physically attractive for your, your husband, you know, to keep your man around? What? I mean, there's the, the conditioning that women, modern young day women have had has been so uh, self-centered. And not, I don't mean that in a, in a 
arrogant way, but they only look, well, I've, I gave him sex and now this is how it should work. It's like, there's another human being at the end of this relationship and it's called the man. And if you're a grade A bitch, nagging about feminism or your worthless degree or how you're oppressed or whatever, Oprah or the worthless broads over on The View said, it's like, look, could, could you love your husband, dote on him, be hot, wear lingerie and occasionally just make them make them some food every once in a while that is considered sex so let, let's let's just put it that it, it that sadly treating a man nice and being an adult and showing up on time and respecting him by not nagging him this is considered bad this is considered sexist and so <laughs> and so that's what confuses the girls it's like well I had sex with him. It's like, well, did you <sighs> hang up like a feminist harpy? And did you bring a bunch of student loan debt? And then did, 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 did you, here's, let me ask you this, Sterling, in your dating life, how entertaining or intellectually engaging has the average woman been on a date? Cause I don't know about Ooh, you, but there's Jesus been times where I'm like, <laughs> how? And it's like, I don't, I mean, well, she's got that thing between her legs. So I guess I'll just suffer. But, Honestly, it's it's there's there's no consideration beyond the physical beauty and the sex and even the physical beauty. It's like, hey, you got to consider the soul of the man as well. So, it's, yes, there's it's no quite, consideration given. It's quite funny because I the same. I, I don't know if it's like a millennial thing or a Gen Z thing, right? But you'll I'll see this on Twitter quite a lot. Younger girls, not even girls in my industry either. Just I just, I just see these tweets on my timeline a, a bit. Yeah, it's like a meme of like younger millennial women sort of complaining about the fact that they have to get a job and go to work, right? It's like a, a very a very frequent meme I'll see is like, you know, like uh, uh, my parents like had sex and now I have to like pay taxes. What the hell, you know? And it's like the irony is these same women will complain about the fact that they have to go to work and and make a living. But they'll also, if you if you dare suggest, well, maybe you should, you know, be a traditional housewife. You are a misogynist, <laughs> sir. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you don't like this, like maybe this this sort of this deal you've been like talked into of like a crew college jet, a crew college debt, get like a, a pygmy gender studies degree, sure, and then sure. like accrue a bunch of, uh, and then work like. A shitty job and pay taxes the rest you're like maybe that wasn't such a good deal after all maybe maybe like f settling down finding a guy who loves you and and raising his kids and and being a being a, like having him take care of you and you take care of the kids maybe that deal isn't actually that bad right but you and i are we might as well be pissing into a hurricane uh because <laughs> no matter no really we we might as well be and and i've talked <laughs> about this many times before they, they, and by they, I mean schools, media, government, academia, college, even corporations now, they have had men and women, not just women, starting at the age of five. And they have, and I used to not think brainwashing was possible. I mean, I, I and some weak minds, only the truly stupid would fall for brainwashing. And you know what, Sterling? I'm completely wrong. The yeah. vast majority of people will fall for brainwashing. Yep. And so when you take a young girl or boy, boys get different brainwashing at the age of five and you got her until she's 25 and she finally gets her master's degree. That is decades of investment, decades, tens of thousands of hours of in school. Now, I'm sure she learned her reading, writing and arithmetic in Appomattox Courthouse, but that she has been programmed. Uh, with so much time and resources and money and investment and propaganda, we could point out the biological realities that are screaming at the woman, go find a guy, go have babies, be nice to a guy. They are, it, it's impervious. And the brainwashing, it's, and it's just an axiom. If it took them 25 years to be brainwashed into something, I think it's going to be 25 years to get them out. And yeah. so it's moot and academic because then the girls are 55 and no one, frankly, wants to fuck you anymore. And so it's it's kind of more of a tragedy, but this is this is the reality. And it, it bears out in the book of numbers when you look at polling data. It's interesting. Girls will <clears throat> girls don't eat, it's not even marriage or kids are the number one thing anymore. It is always career and their politics. And then third, fourth, maybe fifth, sixth comes family and husbands. And even then, I've, I've always said 
And most women say, yeah, I do want to get married, but do you want to be a wife? It's two different things. Yes. I want to have kids. Do you want to be a mother? Obviously not because they outsource those kids to daycare all the time because they got to get back to their precious career. And so this reality, which bears mm -hmm. out in the numbers of the book of numbers, is something that men have to accept. And, and you and I and, and, and women as well could logically and rationally talk about something as simple as, hey, do you think maybe being nice to one another and not calling men misogynists all the time and being a June <laughs> mocking June cleaver all the time. Do you think maybe being nice and being hot and being loving towards your, your husband and your children or putting love first ahead of your career, you think that might make you happier or be better for all of us? The, the brainwashing and the indoctrination comes blindingly through with the vehemency of the response that you get from, from girls. And so it's, it is an uphill battle. I would say it's almost an impossible battle, and the numbers bear that out as well. But that is absolutely a fact, Sterling, you point out, is that the, you, the irony is, hey, maybe you should be nice to your husband. <laughs> like, okay, treat him like shit because I don't know. Raw women. <laughs> what? It's uh, uh, like I, I've, I've had a couple of mini – I've just posted the link to Ari, Aaron Clary's book in the chat, by the way, if anyone's interested. Uh, we'll be plugging this a little bit more, but I had the, I've had a chat like a few arguments like this recently on like, not even meaning to have a, an argument on Twitter. I just I post something about men having standards, <clears throat> standards, yeah. Just the simple concept of just having a, a man having a standard of some kind, any kind, uh, and then I get into these sort of back and forth with women on Twitter who are not even in my again, not in my industry, just random women on Twitter uh, who will say things like. Oh, if if uh, he shouldn't, he shouldn't, she shouldn't be in a relationship with a man if he's trying to force her into being something she's not. And I'm like, well, okay, well then he doesn't have to be in a relationship with her at all, right? Like it's it's not that hard. And, and it's like, and then she's like, and then I'm, and I pose the question like, well, why is it wrong for a woman to do something purely for? The pleasure of her husband or her partner or her boyfriend what's what's wrong with that like and they, that baffles them it's like they, they stop for one second like oh like what do you mean like what why would i do why would i do something why would i do something just for my loving the partner i love why would i do that <laughs> it's, it's not it's it's kind of funny like when you like the more and like I, i'll admit i was brainwashed for a large chunk of my life because i was like raised in the same indoctrination vehicle that everyone else has raised in, which is pu the public school system. And when you break out of it, the long the longer you've been broken out of it, the the more clown world it is. It's like you see you see things that, that see so you see obvious obvious realities being uh, you see you see the, the the contradiction between like what people are taught and believe versus like reality smashing into each other again and again. And you think, how the hell has, have, has everyone not woken up to this stupidity? <laughs> it's mind blowing. But when you're in the machine, it's we had this conversation. Me, and my best friend, uh, had this conversation, and it seems to be we we're trying to figure out like what is the common denominating factor for people uh, uh, to sort of wake up from this bullshit. <clears throat> and you can, and you, and it's not just you know like the. You know, the feminist SJW lies. It's also this sort of scandemic crap that's going on right now. Like, what is the common denominating factor <clears throat> that allows people to see through this bullshit? Because it's not, it doesn't seem to be intelligence. It's, it actually doesn't seem to be linked to IQ. It doesn't seem to be linked to like political affiliations. It, you know, th there's a lot, like any of the things you, you, you start to see like a trend and it's, oh, it's not quite that. It's yeah. not quite intelligence. It's not quite political alignment. And the thing, we, the conclusion we came to was, it's uh, the ability to admit that you were wrong about something. If you have, if you don't have the ability to admit that you were wrong, you will never wake up to any right. of these lies you've been taught. It's impossible because you have to admit that you have to unwind so much conditioning. So, for like a perfect example was right. I have a friend. She. Uh, uh, She's very left, very left leaning, uh, very feminist. She's in her, she's like 35 years old. Uh, and she is like, she believes she's scared of Corona. Right. Okay. 
And it's like, well, if I was to point out, okay, well, let's just let's just take some, let's just look at the total death numbers. I think the US total death numbers from the last five years. And we noticed that 2020, the numbers didn't really fluctuate from the last five years. Hmm. Mm. This is interesting, isn't it? Right. If the total death numbers didn't really change, then how can there be a pandemic? Right. How can there be this big thing? Okay, that's a very civil, very un. You can't argue with that. Third grade fact. math, very understandable. Yes. Uh, very easy to understand. You can't argue right. with that math. However, if I was to present that to, for for me to present that to somebody who was bought into, it's like uh, um, you have to un. It's like they're wrapped up in all this tape, and if I want them to understand this first thing, for them to understand that first thing, they have to unravel all this other conditioning. So for her to understand, for her to even accept that fact, she has to then accept the fact that, well, maybe she's been lied to by mainstream media. Sure. Right. Cause that's the, this, this lie is built upon this lie. Mm -hmm. And then this lie is built upon another lie. Right. And so like the process of unwinding somebody, especially if they're in their thirties, like is damn near impossible because they have to have been, a, they have for them to even begin to unwind. They have to admit that they've been wrong for 35 years. Right. Which is a very hard thing for the ego to accept. Right. And so it is that fear that keeps that tape there. Yes. And and all and let's also admit intellectual laziness, like because it takes a while. You gotta spend some resources and brain power. Like, what do I believe? How is the real world? Okay, how do I how do I uh, exit? Who's this guy? Who's is this, this more? What, what is this clown. show doing here? <laughs> God, has he got a job? <laughs> he's at the, the beating you in book sales, Cappy. Hey, we got a bit. I got to beat Rich Cooper, man. Okay, I'm coming in on him. He's at four thousand plates. I'm at nine thousand. I got to. We got to beat Cooper. That's close the gap. I will look. Look. Help him close the gap. <laughs> help right you guys. Now. Look. His books. His books in the chat right now. Help him close the gap. <laughs> My book sucks, but we got to beat Rich, right? I mean, the book's complete crap. We all want to beat Rich, right? That's uh... anyway. But getting getting back to your point about it um <clears throat> another thing keeping them there is is you really got to ask is what do these people have outside of their lives and what i've found is people that live the lie usually have nothing you know your 35 year old feminist friend i don't what she's not an engineer or an avid music composer or whatever i mean all they have really is their usually political beliefs or ideological beliefs or religious beliefs so that further uh it, inoculates them and cocoons them in, into holding on to that, even if, if the world keeps uh, proving them wrong. <clears throat> um, oh, shoot, I forgot where I was going. It, the, um, it was the lies that they keep. Oh, what, what inevitably, and if you want furthermore, what is the, the common denominator of people is not just that they are willing to admit they're wrong. Usually that happens due to a traumatic event. Yes. Either you yes. get divorced, you lose a loved one, your children die, you get laid off. I and I think the best opportunity for that for most people, and very few people make this jump even, is when you go to college, you do everything that that your elders told you to do. And then when you're you're 22, you graduated at at the college graduation ceremony and everyone's there and celebrating. And the next day you don't have a job. And the day after that, you don't have a job. And all of a sudden it's a month you don't have a job. And then I think where it really hits is when you got to go and apply to be, you know, a waiter, barista, gas station attendant, whatever, which is not to besmirch those things. But that's the rude away. You have now left the the cover of school. And even then to this day, most of those young kids are like, oh, it's the whoever you were conditioned to blame, the Republicans fault, the white man's fault, the Jews fault, the man's fault, society, the corporation. It's like, dude, could you just admit you were wrong or lied to? And I think, again, that's by the by the age of 22. That's what, 17 years of inculcation and brainwashing. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very strong person very strong mind to wake up and admit they were wrong. And if that doesn't shake people from it, usually then it's going to be men because they get divorced. And that's about the only supply of independent minded people I see coming in is after divorce or perhaps a death or a near death experience or something like that. Oh, well, really quickly here, Ben Jones, the $2 super chat. Thank you, man. Is Clary working on his bailout <laughs> here too? <laughs> Do you know the story behind this? 
I don't. Go ahead. No, okay. Me. So, so uh, I have, I'm building a house in South Dakota, right? Not a big house, but it's my little dream house. This is all I ever want. You know, it's got a nice view, trees, all this other stuff. So construction loan, they don't know what the total costs are going to be. So it's like a line of credit. And when the house is done, you take the balance of the construction loan. Let's say it's $250,000 and you roll it into a 30 year mortgage. All right. So you have a traditional mortgage at the end of it. And so I was realizing that uh, Amazon, it's a two month delay in payment. So money I generate this month is paid two months out. Gotcha. And, and so I have this book and other products and other books as well. And then I realized, I'm like, well, wait, if I can get a bunch of sales for my books now, like this month, that money wow. will come in before I finalize uh, the 30 the year mortgage. And it doesn't take a genius to do the finances, but if you could get your mortgage as low as possible, uh, I bring a bunch of cash to the closing and, you know, okay, it's 250, but I pay it down by 50. Now I only have a $200,000 mortgage as an example. Um, and so I was like, all I asked, all I asked, I said, Hey guys, if you're planning on buying my book, do it now. All right. If you're a procrast, do it now because of the math of this. And then some people started donating money and my, and my friends, my, my audience fans, uh, they're a bunch of Han Yockers. And they're like, oh, Cappy needs a bailout. Bailout Clary 2021. The Clary <laughs> bailout. Hey, Clary's a real banker now. And so they're giving me super chat. Here's your, here's your dirty, your shekels, you know, you Paris. I'm like, thanks, guys. All I ask is you buy the books now. I didn't ask for a bailout, but now it's called the Great Clary Bailout of 2021. So. Well, if you want to participate in the, in the Great I'll take your money. Clary yeah. bailout, the like, Great Clary the link, Bailout. The link's in the chat right now. Go get his book. <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to optimize your ROI with women and dating. I am. I'm increasing my ROI. See, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm increasing no, my no. ROI. He's practicing what he preaches, guys. Practice this what is, I this preach. Is exactly what he preaches. Yeah. No, I mean... <clears throat> What do you think? How, okay, besides from so sort of segueing back a bit to what we were talking about before, <clears throat> instead of waiting for guys to get to like that traumatic event of, of unfor and an unfortunate divorce, mm -hmm. how the hell can we sort of, you know, wake guys up a bit a bit sooner? Or and and, and how? Okay, another, and another question for you, Claire. Mm -hmm. How the hell can we wake up women a bit sooner? Because unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, God, what are you? Wait, well, uh, hey, women, look how cute! Look how cute Sterling is, everybody. <laughs> he thinks he's going to convince women. Oh, <laughs> we just want to pinch those porn star cheeks of yours. I'm going. <laughs> look, I'm. I'm <laughs> proposing a hypothetical. Would you like to <laughs> travel back in time for it uh, led to gold? What else do you want to do? <laughs> Beat God because, in a chess match? Tell me what else you want. Because uh, the unfortunate problem is like, so yeah, okay, yeah, guys get like a divorce. Cool. They wake up. They have, they can, okay, they've still got their life, rest of their life hell and they can fix shit. Hmm. A woman, a woman's wake up moment is typically, and we see this, we, we see this with the, the kinds of women who sort of tune in regularly to like our shows. Mm-hmm. Right, they tend to be women who are in their thirties, mm. who have figured, who have like gotten to be thirty. They haven't Light got all the things. Yep. they haven't got all the things they were promised in life. Their, their 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 beauty, their best years of beauty have passed them. They haven't got kids. They can't find a guy, and they're like, "Oh shit! I was everything I was taught. Maybe that wasn't true." And then they they stumble across like guys like us talking about this, and like, "Oh shit! Mm -hmm. Maybe I maybe I have been lied to." This whole right. time. And and there's some women like that, uh, but like like men, it's it's incredibly rare you find someone who has that intellectual strength or intellectual honesty mm. uh, to be like that. Uh, and also keep in mind that disparate sex drives is also what I think drives men to find the truth or seek it out sooner than women or in numbers much greater than women. Uh, women perhaps, again, it's not until men stop paying them attention and all of a sudden that environment goes away, then they might ask some questions, but, but also keep in mind the entire excuse environment, the machinery is there from Cosmo big is beautiful. 40 is the new 25, whatever. Okay. So you're, you're not going to save, you're, you're asking us to go up against a monstrous mm -hmm. marketing, advertising, indoctrination machine as well as female nature. And I'm not, I'm not going up against that, that monster. You know what? You know what I'm starting to see. I'm starting to see like there's this a small, a small, growing uh, group of younger women, like under twenty, like eighteen, like sixteen, eighteen year old women, who are like who are coming out as like wanting to be trad wives. 
it's a small right. it's a small segment but it's a growing segment and it's like you, you can see page my, my friend has uh sort of is clued into this because you see you see the like christian matchmaking pages on instagram you see you're seeing there's lots of like trad wife aesthetic instagrams popping up now uh-huh. and it's so that there i feel like there is a coming opposing trend of this like slowly but sh- a, a tiny one but it is out there and it is slowly but surely growing because he's because i just spent we just spent some time in lexington kentucky right mm. uh which is you know the capital of kentucky <laughs> it is this tiny fucking town and and we met a it was I met, you know got to talk to a couple of young ladies there and they, they were lovely they were absolutely lovely like polite like this this will sound Did they have all their teeth yeah, this will say yeah the beautiful okay. like, all right. All right. this will sound very misogynistic but they didn't talk when like me and my friend were sitting there working they were quietly in the kitchen cooking lunch for us mm-hmm. and, and when they were talking they were talking very very dem- they were very demure they were talking quietly so we could concentrate on work that's not something a girl from la would do no uh they would be like did you hear about Sally? Like, that kind of shit was what would happen. But they weren't like that. And I was like, huh, this is very interesting. Because a lot I, I, I a lot of guys in 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 this space, in particular, like in whenever I tune into Rollo's show or Rich's show, I see guys in the chat who are sort of a bit it's a bit doom and gloom. And I'm not a doom and gloom kind of guy, Cappy. I'm 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 a You will be. <laughs> I'm a, I'm the, I'm the guy who creates unrealistic goals and then achieves those unrealistic goals. Hence, well, hence why I found myself in this career. Like, right. my entire life is one unrealistic achievement after another because I refuse to accept anything else. I refuse to accept like boring, mediocre reality. And mm. so, when I see guys getting kind of uh, um, like doom and gloom about about their dating prospects, right? I, I look at this experience, this very little experience that I had in in like tiny like middle of America, middle America, Kentucky, right? Mm. And seeing a young like eighteen year old girl being like ostensibly what all these guys are looking for, mm-hmm. and then the conclusion I've come to is that these go- these women do exist, but the but you can't find them is the problem because what the way that guys meet women now is okay tinder bumble hinge like online sure. right or i mean especially now that covid's hit like bars and, and clubs are locked down or whatever and the kind these kind of girls don't go to bars and clubs you know but, but these women are out there they do exist it's just it's like, how the hell do you find them in the first place because they're in like it's in america right they're in like middle america in these tiny towns Mm-hmm. And they're like eighteen years old or whatever. They're like, I want to be a, a a trad housewife. Just give me, give me, give me a husband, and and I'll raise kids. And they would love to do that. And then the guy, but the guys with all the money, the guys that have all the status and value and the money, the guys that are actually working on themselves, are living in the cities. Right. So they're in two completely different environments because the guys that they have, the guys that these girls have access to, are you know like Joe Joe Schmo who works at like the timber timber mill or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, and the the problem is, one, I don't believe there's that many girls. I think that's anecdotal. Um, and and de- you can see, you can. I'm not, not going to say it's a huge amount of girls. It's definitely anecdotal. They're, but but they, it's not like they, don't, they it's not like they don't exist at all. No, they and they're they're out there, but they don't exist in the numbers uh, that is going to come anywhere near to satisfying the the demands that men of an equivalent age would have for a traditional housewife. They, the, mm. trust me, the numbers are just not there. Uh, certainly, there are uh, uh, what would you uh, cul-de-sacs within the United States and any other country where there are traditional women. Um, <clears throat> and yes, you you have a problem. How do you meet them? And you can you can address that by like you know maybe spending some time in smaller towns. You go to Memphis or something. I don't know. Or you go to like farmers only. Or you know a lot of people would recommend you go to church. But I have here's here's the other thing, Sterling. I have the utmost of faith in men. Like we've searched high and low for women. Even with the internet and all that, we're not blind. And you know, Troy, he'll go out and do 
day game and all that, if there were traditional nice, sweet girls in ample numbers, our agents in the field, which in the United States, number 150 million, we would have found them. <laughs> and certainly you see them here, you see them there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've ran into that too. You know, one time I turned my head <clears throat> at the airport because there was just a feminine figure. And I, without even thinking, I was like, whoa, what's that? Turned out to be a gal who was a Mennonite. And she was a young gal. She was in, uh, and she, the fact she had long hair and a dress is what out of my periphery said, feminine look. I'm like, <laughs> oh, Mennonite. But <laughs> that's, that's how that's the last time I saw a pretty girl at the airport, you know, like a, a truly feminine looking gal. Mm. So <clears throat> I don't think the numbers are out there. Um, one thing I've, I've done as an economist is like, you'll see hopeful trends mm. or like the, the beginnings of something that looks promising. Like for example, they said, Oh, the millennials are coming out more conservative. Like, yeah, 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 sure. They are. And then they, they weren't. Uh, mm. and so I, I being an empiricist, I wait until the data comes. And when I see, you know, on mainstream media, women like I made my, you know, like when I see on a commercial, a wife bringing the husband a, a nice little steak or the kids, a thing of cookies. And she's in a nice little housewife draft. Then I'll start to say, okay, something's happening. Um, mm. <clears throat> but I, it's anecdotal. I'd have to say. Uh, and, and I, I hate to give men hope. Uh, and I, and here's the other thing. I'm not, I'm not pessimistic. I'm not, I'm, I'm empirical. I look at the data and the data just isn't there. So, but then also finally to get to your point, to help out any younger guys or older guys too. You want to get, how do we get guys in younger and harder, you know, sooner? Because it's it's best you learn this before you go and make your mistakes. That's hard, but we keep doing what we're doing. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of the young men find us through Google searches or they find YouTubes or they get a book. We got books that are being published. Or they're getting out there. I don't think that can be stopped. This is one of the few things I'm optimistic and hopeful for is because men want women. They'll seek it out and they will search. How do I get the girls? And if not my channel or Rolo's or Rich or Ryan's or yours, or anybody else's, they're going to find it on the Internet uh, and they're going to slowly wake uh, uh, their fellow men up. But otherwise, <clears throat> one of the one of my here, I got it right here. This book is 10 years old now. It mm. warned people about worthless degrees. And by God, look, I know parents are losers. Parents are, are effing worthless today. But if you're an uncle or an aunt and you have a niece or a nephew or just a younger person in your life, get him one of these books or say, hey, you got to tune into this guy. And maybe what we ought to do, <clears throat> although I, I have mixed feelings about this, but always in the back of my head, I said, what if we were to create a red pill channel that targets, you know, the age demographic of eighth grade boys? Mm. And I don't want to get into like, oh, they're kids. But if we kept, you know, rated G, <clears throat> we weren't like these harpy, mean feminists trying to weaponize men against women like the feminists do, eighth grade girls, you know, or, or Cosmo or Teen Vogue or stuff like that. But just to provide these young boys. And then you sit and think about, well, when I was a 13 or 14 old boy, I like, oh, what do you want, Boomer? Look at the old man over here telling me to save my money. <laughs> So, I mean, we could maybe make an effort to try and target younger boys like that, but it's, it's just, you know, taking the time out of your, remember, okay, let me ask you this. Has anyone ever successfully set you up with their female friend that was hot? No. No. How hard is it? People are so lazy. It's like, oh, I got this great guy over here, this great gal over here. And I've done this many times. I'll text him like, hey, you two should go out with each other. You know, Chad, here's Elena, Elena, here's Chad. Hmm. Name the kids after me. It's A-A-R-O-N. You know, that kind of thing. And I'll, I'll deliver. Most people won't. You won't even set a buddy up with a girl. Hmm. So I'm, I'm imploring people to, if you got a young person in your life, females too, you want to tell these young girls, look, don't become a millennial spinster. Don't become a Gen X spinster. Look hmm. at how miserable Hillary Clinton is. Look at how miserable, uh, what's her name, uh, for the game, there, there's limitless numbers, right? Do you want to fall in love and find a man and help cook and be his housewife? You do? Well, be honest with yourself and do it because it's pointless not to talk to, I'd say, anyone 20 or older. You got to get them when they're 13, 14. And so if anyone has any ideas aside from recommending mm -hmm. books and telling them about it, I, I don't know what we can do. I think what that's an interesting idea. Like, of like deliberately pitching stuff at like a younger male audience. I, one of the things that me and my friend have been talking about recently is this idea of like aesthetics mm. and that like, especially because men are, men are so visual, like they kind of, 
giving younger men a uh, something that is, is a, an aesthetic to aspire to, I think, is one of the ways that you can start pushing younger guys in the right direction. And by that, I mean, okay, like here, like by and that, by that, I mean us being the like and being a a brand, an image that they want to emulate because it just looks so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Right, so being the guy who's jacked, being the guy who is like has the visual cues of like status, wealth, prestige. Greyhounds, being... yeah. I mean, you get greyhounds. That's going to really impress the people. That's really... <laughs> I mean, that guy's dope. Whoever's got greyhounds, man, they're dope. The long flowing locks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's. You got to think like there's a reason that we didn't listen to to like uh like there isn't there's a reason I didn't really. Well, not that my my dad or my uncle were even trying to teach me this shit. Right. But there's a reason why I wouldn't have listened. It's because like who is this bum? He's like fat and he's like he's it's fat. Dad. And, it's dad. Like he's fat and he's he's lame and he's like, you know, his missus is old. Okay, whoop de doo. Why would I wh- this is not an aspirational thing for me to 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 look up to. Right? I would look up to like athletes. And be like, well, that guy is living the life I want to look. Well, I want to live. Bruce Willis was mine. I always looked at John McClane. I'm like, my God, he's he's God. I just want to be John McClane. Right. And so, I think there's we're missing a trick here in our little space of the internet, hmm. where we're sitting back and we're preaching stuff and we're writing books and yeah, we're putting it, we're putting out all the right and correct information. Yes, great. That's a good. It's a great start. But we need to bring we need to back that up with the aesthetic and the lifestyle that is going to inspire younger dudes because here's the the thing right if i if i have geeky dorky soy boy who's like be a be a male feminist and then i have you know jacked and tanned driving around in like a lambo with like a harem of beautiful young women Mm -hmm. which of these two is the young like the 16 year old boy going to be like i want to be like that guy Right. Which one is more like it's it's a, it's a no brainer for like the younger man going through puberty. He's going to look at that one guy and be like, "I want to be that motherfucker. That's the guy I'm. Je- that's the guy I want to be when I grow up." And it's like, okay, well, you can we can be that guy and deliver all the correct information, all the correct intelligent information and knowledge. But it ha- like delivering it in the like the branding is important, I think. Oh, that'd be key and critical because we hit you. You ask for oh, w- what role models do we have? Have you ever thought about the Rule Zero guys? All right, you're think about this background. I'm not. I'm not trying to kiss anyone's ass, but I just I just realized you're like, wow, that's kind of interesting. We got a porn star. We have an economist. We have a what? A, a Rich did like a car financier, a genuine entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, Ryan was a sailor. Uh, Carl, I think, is also an economist. Uh, in modern life, John, he's a nice guy. Uh, so, <laughs> but if you look at all, it's like this is kind of an eclectic. A Troy was a, a recovering addict. I mean, and not to say, oh, you want to become an addict, but look at how hard it was. I mean, that guy went mm-hmm. on on a journey. You have this kind of uh, a, a collection of model superheroes you may want a real world like yeah that was a hard life and 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 no it's not sexy being an economist but you're going to get your finances together and you can retire early and things like that but the question is the delivery and the message because one i i'm somewhat apprehensive about going to minors you know uh i i mean i know the feminists and the leftists have no problem taking five-year-old kids and so i guess i can say well f off but i i want to be intellectually honest secondly you know, what do we tell them? It's like, because the threats are immediate and you got to say, look, kid, here's the deal. And I don't mean to be Debbie Downer and nor do I want to come. Women are all hoes. Da, 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 da. But, you know, we, we could diplomatically and adroitly explain to these young men. Um, and then uh, what else was I worried about? Um, I, oh, the other, I don't want to I don't want to destroy their their dreams either. We'd have to have a message that gives them something to look forward to. Yeah, you need, you need some they, hope. You need to give these. Yeah. You need to give these young men some hope, right? Because you need to steer. You need to steer them off the. You need to steer them off the the lies and to right. run on the right path of truth. You need to give them some hope that, like, yeah, the rest of the world. Because like, if you if you show them the lies, they're going to be a bit like hopeless. Depressed. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, well, 
okay, all this is bullshit, then, then what does that mean for my future? Well, you have to give them some hope. And the way you give them some hope is by showing them an aspirational example. Right. Like, look, here's how it can, like, look, this guy is, is going against the grain and he is so happy and fulfilled and he has everything you want. You can, you can sell vodka and have greyhounds and a snowmobile that you saw it on fire. Look, you can aspire <laughs> to be that. But, well, exactly. Because yeah. that's the thing, like, guys will sort of, you know, uh, uh, Guys, some guys will look at like you or or Rolo, and they'll be like, "Oh, these these guys, these guys are like old and and cut, and they're, they, right. I mean, you, they like you. he wears pajamas. That's not an inspirational thing. You I, actually I show do, cooler pictures. Yeah, you actually, I've seen you. You actually do have some cool pictures. You have some. You you do have some very very fun aspects of your life. You're always out there in the canyons, like hiking, right, running around, like having a good time. Like that's all part of the of that's the correct kind of branding. You know, and same with Rollo, like on his snowmobile all the time, like hanging out, like hanging out. Say what you will about greyhounds. I think hanging out with, with dogs is a cool thing. Big but, rats. They're big, wiry rats. <laughs> that's all they are. Big, but that, wiry but, rats. But these are sort of like, and I think some of the, the guys in our in our group in Rule Zero are kind of apprehensive to be flashy because they don't want to come across as a grifter, they're, because they don't want to come across as cheesy, because they don't want to, they don't want to like, because you guys get so much flack already from, you know, black pill communities and feminists and you're getting so much shit already. You don't want to draw more attention to you. So I get that, but you're actually in the unique position of being able to show guys, well, Hey, look, I'm, I'm living a fantastic life. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of what I was trying. I've been trying to do lately with, with my travel vlogs, my bouncing around all the, going around all over the world to be like, like living an unapologetic life. Like, mm -hmm. hey guys, you don't have to like be depressed and and live this kind of bullshit. I play video games all day, right? Yeah, yeah. like you can like, get out there and live your life and, and enjoy. Like, this is what life is about. You've got one shot at this. I'm not a, I'm not a religious guy. Like, I don't believe in like reincarnation. Like, and 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 the the reason for that is because it it scares me. It scares me that if I die tomorrow, like, that's it, mm -hmm. bang, game over. Like, so having having like being con constantly confronting my own mortality is a very, very good thing. Oh, that's a fuel. That's rocket fuel to make you get off your ass. Absolutely. Right. And mm -hmm. surrounding myself with guys who are, who are where I want to be, who are like further ahead in my life, like, like you, like Rich, like Rolo, like John, like Myron, like being surrounding myself with high caliber guys also lights a fire under my ass. Cause I'm like, well, I don't want to be the fucking schlub of the group. Don't worry. John is Wait, John's got that covered. That's <laughs> Uh, I John, hope I John, modern life John's listening. I, John would John would say Ryan Stone is that guy. Uh, he served <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. You get like too many people live this life like it's a fucking dress rehearsal, mm -hmm. and it's not. It's not a fucking dress rehearsal. And they and I and I, I see too many guys like having such low standards for their own life. They're mm -hmm. like, thinking like, oh, I couldn't. I couldn't do what you guys do. Like, uh, like I'm a fuck, like I come from like a 3000 person country town in rural Western Australia. And now I am a porn star in LA. Like, internationally traveling. Porn an star. internationally traveling porn star in Los Angeles. Like, like if I, I can, if I can do that shit, anyone can fucking do this. It's just, it just takes like the belief that you can do it and then the action to back it up. What, what the sad thing that you and I are trying to do here is we're trying to be fathers to kids who don't have fathers. I don't care if the dad's present. I don't care if the dad was kicked out of the house. Yeah. And, and it's almost an impossible test because you have to start when the kid is born. And then you take the kid out and you play ball and you spend time with the kid. And one thing I never had, and I don't know anyone else that had it, but I never had the Ward Cleaver experience or the Andy Taylor, Andy Griffith uh, experience, where they would sit the boys down or mm. OP and explain – why things were wrong or bad or good or the rules and laws. And, and it's almost too late. Like, how are we going to save a 14-year-old kid? There's already 12 years of a lack of a dad there, which has mm. been supplanted with not necessarily feminist, but female-specific or biased upbringing and all that. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a pretty hard hurdle that we're trying to do because there's going to have to be a deprogramming process there as well. And forget... 18 or not 18, 14 year old boys consider every adult human being out there, man, I can't get people to get out and go have a beer. 
because they think they're going to live forever, apparently. And I'm like, yeah. guys, tickety talk, tickety talk. Do you guys want to go hiking in Moab? Oh, I don't know. That's so far away. I'm like, what are you going to do? Watch TV? And so there, uh, if we came up with some silver bullets, some simple logic that a 14-year-old can understand, or at least mm. plant some seeds, not of doubt, but to you know, if we can knock one domino down, pull one piece of tape, you might be able to, to, to do some damage or progress in this case. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it, without dads, man, it's it's really hard. And so, well, I mean, it, I guess going forward, if the best thing you could do is if you have an effing child, be an effing father to your kid. That's a good start. I, I actually had this conversation in the sauna in Portugal recently. You brought, so you brought up this idea of like, yeah, I never had that experience of mm -hmm. like having the older, wiser dad or uncle for your father figure sit me down and teach me about the world. Sure. And I had I had this real I had this thought when I was in the sauna. I was like, I don't think that ever actually existed. And here's why. Here's why I don't think it ever existed. Like, because, like, I mean, you didn't have it, and you're like, you're, 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 you're boomer. You're boomer generation, right? What? Like, How? What are you talking? I'm X, Gen X. I got an X right here. I have a video where I christen a millennial to become an honorary <laughs> member of Gen X. I got dope chains and a hat. <laughs> I knew that would piss you off. <laughs> but okay, right? But we've got guys like, who didn't have that experience, who are boomers, right? Mm -hmm. Who didn't have the, my dad sat me down and told me about the world. And I had the thought one day, like, I don't think that ever actually existed. It was just this fantasy in, in, in TV shows. And here's what, I, here's what I think actually existed instead. Maybe you can critique my theory. We used to have men only spaces. Right. So instead of having like, instead of like the dad sitting down and like teaching you about life, what would actually happen is the younger men would hang out with all the older men and you would learn through osmosis mm -hmm. rather than having someone sit there and like drill it into your head. You'd be like, Oh, uncle Joey acts this way. Granddad acts this way. Coach McGurr says this. And yeah, yeah. like, mm -hmm. and oh, here's how they're actively living their life. Here's how they're actively, uh, here, here's how their relationship with their, with their wife works. Mm -hmm. Here's how their relationship with their daughters work. Like he, and, and, they're just learning by observing and being in male only spaces, right? Where men are free or free to be honest mm -hmm. without, without the critique of, of women. Yeah. But now we don't have those spaces anymore. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have male only spaces. Every space has, has, you know, every time the guys are getting together, there's women around or, you know, sporting events, gentlemen's clubs, the boy scouts, whatever it is. Right. Now there's women there. So you don't have the ability for men to be honest around each other and for younger men to learn through osmosis that way. So I think that's actually what we lost instead. I don't think that I, I have this theory that there never was really a period where like, you know, the, 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 unless you were, unless we're rewinding the clock back to like tribal days when the sure, tribe sure. sits around the campfire rite and, of passage you must take the flame of fire to the mountain of doom and yeah exactly yeah. exactly like or like the you know the, the 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 tribe elder is telling a story around the campfire every night right. in in modern western society i think we're long removed from that what what i also think is i think a lot of these boomer parents and, and certainly gen xer parents they didn't know what they were doing either i mean imagine when you were 30 did you know anything when you were 30? Like, I, you know, in 30, I, I was starting to get wise, but nowhere near as wise as I am now. 25, yeah. if you had a kid, we my, I think, yeah, most people would have kids in their 20s back in the day. And when you were 25, you were an idiot. Uh, you, yeah. you didn't know anything. So I think there's a lack of wisdom to pass on, uh, certainly there as well. Well, I like I, I thought I knew everything when I was like when I when I hit like 24, 25, I was like, I know everything. And then as I got older, I'm like, I become it's weird. I've become the more the more actual knowledge I've accumulated, the more actual experience I've accumulated, the less certain I've become. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, and I'm uh, like, shit, I actually don't know as much as I think I know. But but and then oddly enough, I'm now the, I'm now teaching guys shit. So it's just it's like I would have had more confidence as a teacher when I was like twenty five than mm -hmm. I do now. But I know, but I'm teaching way better shit now, and I'm actually better at teaching now. It's just this weird paradox of life. I guess. It, it's sad, and um, I've said before, I'm thankful for feminism, otherwise I wouldn't have this job. But we don't have a high right. hurdle to pass on wisdom. I mean, I still can't get kids not to major in stupid shit. I just pulled the numbers. 80% of, uh, 
was it 80% of women or 80%? No, 80% of women. I think it's 70% both male and female. The majority of people major in dumb shit. Yeah. Like, like we can't even get that one. I mean, this is one one Uh Modern Life John, he has, when I, I he had me take his course, it's salt. Um, <clears throat> very introductory one one And he's talking about like, okay, guys, put the pot down. Okay. Two, you need to brush your teeth. Three. Yeah. You need to shower. And I said, John, you got to be kidding me. Then he shows me his enrollment figures. Like, dude, they don't have anyone telling them this. Like, yeah. you know this, I know this, but there are such a lack of fathers and mothers that invest in their kids. And so, you know, we don't, we don't have to all make them astronauts. We just got to make it so they can fly a sop with camel, you know, just get them off the ground a little bit. We're already doing the Lord's work. <laughs> uh, while we're at it, guys, like I always forget to do this, smash the goddamn like button while we're talking here because this subscribe is subscribe too yeah well give it a subscribe and uh give 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 you know cat where's, where's i'm gonna plug your book one more time here in the chat here cappy boom there it is again thank you in the chat we gotta get we gotta beat rich cooper's numbers god be it. rich cooper that's all it is you can <laughs> buy the matters. book and throw it in the garbage long as we beat rich all, cooper. all that matters <laughs> <laughs> Dave, David said, "Careful, say his name too many times, and he will appear." <laughs> <laughs> well, he just Rollo, showed up. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Rollo appeared, and we did say his, his name that many times. Oh, he's got nothing else to do. <sighs> yeah, right. It's yeah. It's I, I'm I'm fundamentally an optimistic guy. Um, you know, with with like I'm I'm a realist to an except to to the until I don't need to be right. I'm a, I'm a realist until it doesn't help me, you know? And that's why, like, for example, for example, anyone who watches this channel regularly will know that my goal is to have a harem of six women with a dozen kids, right? Two kids per woman mm -hmm. and live on, you know, live, not live by myself, but like have my, have my own land, build a castle on it, have my harem of six women with two kids each, uh, have some horses and have a pack of attack dogs, trained attack dogs. Cool. This is my. This is That's my your like. Dream, huh? That's my great, this, man. That's this is, awesome. This is not a dream. This is a. This, this is a goal, Cappy. This is a ten year, like a ten, right. five, ten year it's goal. Right. Your power to get that goal, but for most people who aren't going to take action, it's a dream. But yeah, it is yeah. your goal. Yes. And the thing that's that's the I, I remember I can't remember who told me this. Like it's like a cheesy friggin' like self help mantra. But like, the only difference between a goal and a dream is like a, is like actionable steps. Work. That's it. It's like break. Okay. Well. How, how do I get? To, how do I get this? Well, here's how I would reverse engineer the goddamn thing, mm -hmm. break it down to steps, and then bang, you have a action plan to achieve that goal, mm -hmm. right? It's not that. It's not that complicated. Yeah, but but, but okay. Most and guys he, don't. Think, most guys don't think they're possible. No, most guys don't think that is possible. And I'm here to tell you guys right now. Like I honestly think this is the, the harems is like the direction where Western society is going to be heading. Interesting. Because because you have so many guys. Who are not working on themselves, mm. like you just said. Like, if guys don't know how to fucking clean their teeth and what and, and scrub their toilet bowl, mm. like the the bar for competition is so fucking low, right? So that's the first thing. The bar for competition is so fucking low. Two women are openly hypergamous, and it's an open hypergamy is being sort of broadcast and used as like right, branding, being marketing pushed. material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So women are looking for the bigger, better deal constantly, and they're willing to share dudes. Mm -hmm. they're, they're willing to share a guy with a woman, with other women, rather. Like, because they can't, because everyone, all the other dudes suck. Right. So the bar, the bar for dudes is so low. The women are like, fuck, where are all the good dudes? The only logical conclusion is the top dudes get her harem. Correct. And I genuinely think that's that's where we're, we're heading. Right. So. We're, we're, I would say we're already there because, you know, back when I was a player, one guy, you know, not to brag, um, this is when dancing was, you know, I was on the dancing and all that. And I was dating like five guys. And my buddy Jeff comes up to me. He's like, you know, oh, I'm thinking about asking out that gal. I said, oh, yeah, I went out with her last night. And he's like, is there a girl here you're not dating? Like, can you share a little bit? I'm like, well, I'm not. She's, you can ask her out. We're not committed or anything like that. Uh, so, but it it already is happening where there's, you know, one, one alpha can easily keep five, ten gals off the market as they pine for them. Yeah. Uh, and so, and it's, so it's already happening. I think it'll just be socially accepted where you can actually say harem, 
And oh yeah, he's got five gals in his harem. Or, or you know, oh, you know, uh, stirring Liz over there. He's got two two uh, gals. He's looking for another one. Yeah. Well, you might even not even say. So, so I, I I I bring this example up a fair bit for anyone who watches my show regularly. I have a friend in rural New South Wales. He is a uh, ex. He's ex Australian military. He is a BDSM dom. He has uh, six wives who live on his farm with him. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all like collared submissives. Okay. Of his, like either in like BDSM. Right. No, I'm familiar. Masculine Geek has a BDSM show. Yeah. I'm yeah. Familiar. Yeah. So he has like six wives, and, and they he I, I chat to him every now and then. He, he was like. The, the, Sterling, the key, the key thing here is you find a slut and you, you teach her all the, you, you be the father she never had. You teach her how to be a traditional housewife. And then bang, you have this, you have the, he is living the dream. I'm not joking. Like he is basically my role model. Six wives just sounds like a pain in the ass, but I'm sure he's, there's been some training but, in, in, in so, like no. six, it's six wives who are all submissive to him, who all have sex with each other, who are all, uh, he's teaching them like farm skills, like he's teaching them how to butcher chickens and and how to like herd, milk a cow, milk right. a cow, how to how to drive an all terrain vehicle, how to like chop down a tree, how to use a chainsaw. He's teaching them all these life skills. He's being the father they never had, mm. and then and then in the evening he ties them up, spanks them, and and has orgies. <laughs> I'm like horrible, what? just horrible. <laughs> show me a man who would not trade places with him in an instant. Show me a guy that wouldn't do that. And I think, like, because here's my thing: when uh, one guys aren't setting high enough, ridiculous enough goals for their life, right? Because, like I said before, I think this is the direction we're heading. And I think if you're if you're a guy who is intelligent, who is willing to put some work in, you know, like like who is happy to admit he was wrong for the rest of his life, for the right. the past of his life, and wants to change and actually learn the shit and make some improvements, then you're already miles ahead of everyone else. This is the direction things are heading. Why wouldn't you want a stupidly ambitious life? Why would you settle for one wife? Go, go for, have this gonna, crazy you're life. Gonna, you're going to die. Take the shot. Exactly. Like, do it. Yeah. No, I, I totally Why not? understand. Yeah. <laughs> Why not go after something ridiculous like that? You know, so I'm, and unfortunately, I haven't had him on my show yet because the internet in rural New South Wales is shit. The UK? Really? It, no, no. In rural, in West, in uh, New South Wales is in Australia. No, it's in Australia. Oh, one of the Providence. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a uh, it's absolute gobshite. Uh, he he's installing like high uh, like getting his own like fiber installed. So once that's happened, then we might be able to get him on the show without him actually looking like a eight bit Super Mario. He, he could he could make a show. He could have his own TV show. Well, make it's funny. Show. It's funny. He was on. Um, and, I only, and the only reason I bring him up is because he's such he's he's a, such a perfect example of what everyone wants. Everyone out there is talking about like, oh, I just want a trad wife. I want to like, you know, or, or I want like a loyal woman. He's got six of the fucking thing. He's got six loyal women. Like, You can't find one. Like he's got six. So he's doing something right that none of you guys are doing. But here, here's an you know? interesting thing he did. And me and Rich Cooper have gone back and forth. We have different philosoph uh, phil philosophies on this. But he had to grab the slut and train her. And yeah. there's there's like a training, uh, so it's not like they're going to be preassembled over in Lexington, Kentucky, to conveniently come. Oh yeah, I'll come with you on your little yeah. your little uh, plantation there. Sure, yeah. uh, there there is a check, but yeah, no. If he's got, he could write a book. Uh, but there is a training or a, an investment or a, a oh yeah forging is process that that is involved. Well, here's the, here's the thing. It took it took time. Like he, he his first submissive, his first two he's had for like. Oh, a good five years, right. at least. He said he said his first and second submissives for a while, and then it it took him. A while. And he he added like three in the last year or two. It took him a while, and he's gone through some as well. He, he said some, oh, he some girls some come out, in. He boots them on yeah, he said some. He said some girls come in and, and, and leave who just didn't fit the mold. You know, sure. that wasn't for them. They didn't fit his criteria, which is fine. They come in, they try because they, they, he he puts them into a contract, and it's like, okay, you have to, he, these are what I expect of you. This is what you expect of me. This is what this is what we're going to be doing. And if you meet the requirements, then you become my wife. If you don't, then you know you you leave the family. He called, and that's, sure. that's 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 what I was getting at. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think we're going to refer to them as harems. I think we're going to just call them families. 
because that is what he he refers to it as his family, him and his right. six wives. Well, that's what have, it was in biblical times. I mean, exactly. you know, you know, Abraham had uh, the Lord knows hundreds of wives, tens of concubines, who knows? I, but yeah, no, that was that was the family. Yeah, and that's the that's what the point is. I think, you know, guys. You, look, I, I met I, I this uh, last weekend. I was in Vegas and I met up with the Tate brothers. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Tate Vegas. brothers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I, I was hanging out with the Tates in Vegas this weekend and uh, got to meet them face to face. They're great. They're genuine great guys. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, hanging out with them more in the future. And a lot of guys give them shit. You know, they're not. They're not. How? You know, they're, not. they're great shape. They How well, could it's... you give them shit? Here's the thing, because a lot of a lot of dudes on I see a lot of dudes float around Twitter and on the and like especially in the manosphere and it's like grow a beard, ha have a wife, settle down, have kids, and it's like yeah, okay, like have your trad wife thing, right? But if you're gonna if you're gonna sit there and say you and your trad wife and your kids and tell me that you wouldn't trade places with them, <laughs> you are fucking Liar. coping it's a right. cope it's all right. a cope every man i fundamentally believe every man wants like if they could have that they would take it but they don't believe they can get it they they don't believe they can uh manifest that in their life they don't believe they have right. the skills to do it so they so they settle for something else and they make up a, a false belief that oh they i wanted that, I, yeah. I wanted that all along anyway i didn't really right. want I didn't really want the money and the Lambos and the and the and the harem of money. women. Yeah, I didn't really exactly. want any of that stuff. No, I, I, I wanted I wanted the trad wife and the simple wife. I'm calling bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna call bullshit. Yeah. No, I'll yeah. admit I I don't think I want six, three. That'd be. <laughs> And then you no, know, we'll just start with two. We'll see where it goes from there. <laughs> like, all right, let me let me. Streamline my operations here a little bit, but three, oh God Almighty, I can't imagine six. Weeks. I don't care how well they're trained. I'd be like, oh God. <laughs> well, basically, the well, the, here. okay. Here's the thing: I, I, it's a full time job for him, basically. Yeah, that's. It does sound like work. It does sound like a job. Yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, but look, so maybe six is too much for some guys, but definitely more than one. Yeah, I'm with you. Oh yeah, of course. You Every know, wants that. Yeah. Who does it? What guy does like? And this thing, I don't. Here's another thing I thought I, I was thinking of this morning. I don't think any man should die having never had two women suck his dick. Right. I would. I would occur, concur there as well. Yes. Like every man needs to go to the grave knowing what that feels like. Right. Because it's fantastic. It's just. I, just I, I'll have to believe you on that one. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm no scientist, but I'm going to guess it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. You should. Everyone. Every guy should make that his. If, if that's not a goal of yours, then I don't know what you're doing. Especially if, as a younger man, if you're like a if you're like a virile young man and you don't want to have two women sucking your dick at some point, then what the fuck are you doing? Like, come on, like set 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 your goals a bit loftier. Right, but they but you you gotta keep in mind what they've been brave. But it it really is just a matter of choosing whether you want it or not, or at least acknowledging you could have this if you put forth the effort. I think that that. Uh, in mind hurdle or hurdle in their mind is something that that they have and then once you get to the point and by gosh i tell you it's realizing that you're going to die that is usually going to be the, the the what prompts you to take action i just if there's one thing i could convey to people it's that you're gonna die and you might as well pack it in and so you know if, if you could pass that message on to young men god bless you i, I hope they they take advantage of the lies but i've tried for years and and uh i don't know maybe maybe a harem of six women uh, might do that. Well, dude, that's that's what I'm. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, I'm trying to build this as this life is going to be somewhat aspirational for younger men to look up to, mm. and be like, well, this guy has the shit that like, and there's also a bit of a, there's a bit of a fuck you factor in there to all the people that like to all the to all the angry like feminists I've ever come across. I want to be able to be just like, I oh, I'm I'm gonna cry myself <laughs> to tears with with all this cash I have. And 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 I'll, I'll console I'll just, myself in five pairs of titties. Yes. Yeah. Oh, woe is me! Whilst I, you know, drive around in my sports car and 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 survey my estate from the top of my castle, <laughs> I'm just going to have to hope that one day you will forgive me, dear feminist. Like that, that to me, that's like kind of the, like uh, yeah. Call me petty, sure. 
I'm a petty guy. whoop de doo But it gets shit done. Like, for me, the single biggest motivating factor in my life has always been, like, telling someone to fuck off. Yeah. Like, someone telling me I can't do something. Oh, yeah. And then, that'll, yeah. And then proving those motherfuckers wrong. That has mm -hmm. always been the single biggest motivator for me. For some reason, I just like shoving it back in people's faces. Yeah, you know, and like whatever get whatever gets you to do the job. Maybe maybe it's spite. Maybe it's oh, I'm gonna die soon. Revenge. Maybe, yeah, revenge. Like <laughs> whatever it is, I don't care what it is. As long as you're like, as long as you're not going out to hurt other people. As long as what you're doing is just you know, making you and other people happy, and you know, building wealth, building like. Creating a service, creating just a business, being that happy, helps people, happy, like, Jason. living a fulfilled life, raising right. a happy family, whatever it is. As long as you're not out there like trying to hurt people, I don't care what the motivating factor is. Mm -hmm. Get out there and do it. You know? I'll I'll tell you this: nearly all my production I have now has come from a source of hate, revenge, spite, being able to say "I told you so," proving people wrong. And uh, I know that sounds petty, but man, it's great. It feels so good. It's not just that you got the accomplishment, but it's this, I proved inferior people wrong. Yeah. I, 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 I proved it. And, and it's, uh, you know, you feel all oh, that's petty. You should live and let go. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I did. And I went in and did my own things, but I won't yeah. lie to you. It's not like a little extra cherry on the Sunday to like people said I could have do it. And I was a loser. Now these people are fat losers themselves. It's, it's, it's nice yeah. to have. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, I, we, man, we should do this again sometime. Okay, no, I'm around. I feel like I feel like we have a good rant. Coming yeah. Forward. What? Well, uh, get... Plug, plug your, plug your, your new book. Well, we'll My new book <clears throat> is the book of numbers analyzing ROI on the pursuit of women. I have, I think, nine, maybe ten books out now. That is probably the most high ROI book, you know, for sixteen bucks or whatever it is. It's paper book, audio, Kindle. Don't say is it in paperback. You didn't look to see where it says paperback. You didn't click on the button. It's available in all three. It's there. Mm -hmm. uh, but out of the books I I currently have published, I say that is going to be probably the most important, the most cost beneficial, and the most useful to young young boys, of course. And if you happen to be an older man, I cannot emphasize this enough. If you've gone through hell or you were divorced, or you were in pain. Because when you read this book, it's not going to solve your problems, but you're going to go through these numbers. And, and it's not, this isn't biased, by the way, guys. You know, this isn't like I came in with an agenda. I did an actuary study. It's all in here. When you read through this, you'll be like, holy crap. I, you didn't stand a shot. Not, not to condone MGTOWs or, or that particular group, but you really had an uphill battle here, guys. And uh, if you thought, what's wrong with me? What did I do? What did I do? Read through that. And say, oh, there's, I'm not insane. I, I couldn't have done anything. No, seriously. It's like a lot of guys, they they say, if I could have done this, they replay that Monday morning football. Like, what could I have done differently? Mm -hmm. It's like, there's nothing you could have done. Now, I mean, if you were a dick and you beat your children, sure. But if you played aces and you did, and you still, it's like, get the book. You'll find out why, and you'll say, gosh, I should go buy all of Aaron's other books so we can outsell yeah. Rich Cooper. That's mm. the only reason. <laughs> well, there you go, right? Okay, uh, make sure you like hit the like button as well. Helps more people see. I think this is a fantastic like rant. Well, we no, gonna, I think yeah, I like your great, idea so. of, yeah, I like your idea of maybe targeting the, the eighth graders. Maybe we get, yeah. get some other guys on the horn, maybe rolls tune in, but other people might have some insights. But yeah, exactly. maybe that might be something to work on. Uh, if you've read any, if anyone here has read any of uh, Aaron's other books, please leave some comments down below and uh, tell everyone else about them because I, I thoroughly recommend Aaron's books all the time to people. Thank you. Um, leave them in the com leave, leave your reviews in the comments down below. Uh, if you want to uh, take the piss out of Aaron as well, you can comment down below. <laughs> make fun of him and his and his hats and his. <laughs> What's wrong? I like my Ford hat. It's a great tell him, hat. Tell Nine him he's bucks a, at Walmart. Call him a boomer. He'll really enjoy uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah, right. And uh, um, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Obviously, subscribe as well. Do that too. It's always fun. Uh, any any final any closing words for everyone? No, that's it. Just uh, tune in. If you guys got questions, I run a consultancy called Asshole Consulting, and uh, yeah, just tune into all the guys. Beat yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> and beat, Rich and beat Rich Cooper. That's it. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, <laughs> that'll do us for today, guys. I'm gonna end it here. You take care, and I'll 